Hello, I'm Blas Polidori, and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. Hi, everyone. It's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press. Today, I'm happy to be joined by Blas Polidori. How are you? Hello, Chloe. Very good. You? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm really excited to talk with you about a movie that you're a part of and it's doing so well, Society of the Snow. But before we get into the movie, I know it was your mother who always suggested you act at a young age. So she she had the right idea, but why did it take you so long to reach out to an agency and start your career in film? Well, you're right. My mother always encouraged me to act and I wasn't sure about it because I wanted to do like other things or I had my man, my mind in other places. So it took me a while to realize that it might be my path. But uh, we were like in COVID-19 pandemic and I have the idea to do like a photo book. Photo book? Yeah. And I don't know why I I just thought about it and sent my photos to an agency. And I had a casting for like an advertisement and I was selected and I was like, wow, well, maybe this is this is for me. And I started I, I started acting. But I don't know why it took me so long. We I should always listen to our mothers. <laughs> That's the that's the right idea. I feel like it sometimes takes time. Yeah. Like you mentioned, you kind of had other things that you might have been interested in. Was it like something a school subject or or what yeah. else did you which which one did you maybe want to do? Well, I wanted to be a, a lot of things in like secondary school, like in in for some moments I thought I thought about medicine and then like I don't know philosophy, psychology, history, uh, a, a lot of things I wanted to be. And finally, I, I decided psychology, but my, my, my future was somewhere else. What's interesting is about psychology is, especially in film, you can get into the minds of different people. So you can kind of um, get a chance to do that in a film career, which I think is exciting. But uh, how supportive, I know, I feel like I know the answer, but how supportive have your family and friends been in this path for you with not only acting, but on the modeling side as well? Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot. My My parents are like, the if I have like managers of or or something like my parents are the top of that like everything goes through my parents yet especially my mother and they are really really supportive and when when I had the 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 news that I was selected for Society of the Snow it was it was a big deal because I was I was young like I was I I had just turned eighteen, and I I haven't finished. I haven't finished high school yet, so I didn't know if I movie without uh, ending secondary school. And it was a moment like we we sat down and we had to think about it and but they always they they've always supported me so that's good it's so nice that they were supportive and they really have you know a hand in and your career and your successes as well because they say you know when you're cast in projects um during this whole journey like your family is with you so um it's important to have that tell me about your your love for music because i know you play guitar and you sing like mm. a little bit how long has music been in your life no that's very very new i started like to uh, I started learning guitar 
uh, when I finished the movie, uh, like by myself. And then I started with a professor. But I've always, well, not always, but I I think I've discovered music in during uh, the movie, actually, during the the process of the movie because the my 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 colleagues my the other actors were very uh, musical well were very like into music and we have a few musicians so they also lead my path to music so and singing it's like i don't i don't think sing i, I do it like for fun because i have to put <laughs> yeah well um i saw a yeah, video yeah. that that you posted with your sister lola and she was singing and you were playing yeah. guitar she has a beautiful voice so it must be nice to make music with family that was good yeah she she did uh like she had singing lessons for for a while so she likes to sing and that was a song that we both like and that I learned to play in, in the guitar. So it was it was fun. Who are your favorite music artists and like what do you like about them and their music? Okay, I like a lot uh, Luis Alberto Spinetta. That it's uh, like they are mostly Argentinians, but Luis Alberto Spinetta. I really like Gustavo Cerati, Charlie Garcia, and like modern, like from now, I like also Argentinian, ECA, and those are like my top. What kind of genre are they? Like, is it kind of um, guitar, like a lot of guitar in the music? Like yeah. Pop? Okay. Uh, like, uh, Spinetta, Spinetta and Cerati uh, and Charlie Garcia are rock. Um, and like, yeah, it's rock, but it's like not super hard rock. Yeah, I think and, like here they call it kind of maybe like alternative rock or something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. They are from the 90s. Like, it, but yeah. And ECI, it's like, I don't know if, if yeah, in the United States you have like trap. Okay, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, ECI we do have trap. Awesome. Well, with the 90s kind of rock, I mean, I guess you were a baby. You're not even born yet at the time. Yeah. So is it like your your parents or got you into that music? No, my 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 colleagues in in the in the film, like I before the movie, I I I knew uh, Pineta, Charlie, Serati, but I didn't listen to them so much. But uh, during the movie, all of my colleagues uh, listen to to everyone, to everything, and they got me into into this this genre. genre. Yeah, this is perfect genre. It's it's oh, nice to feel well inspired, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, because that music, it's also very, the lyrics are very, very nice. And it's, it's those, the music, that type of music is very inspiring also. Well, let's get into the movie that we keep talking about yeah. and, and, and that you worked on. So you star as Gustavo Coco Nicolic in Society of the Snow. Now you had rehearsals and training in Barcelona. Tell me about these workouts and training sessions and how they prepared you for filming. Yes. So we had initially a diet that we had to follow to gain weight because 
most of the of the of the characters were rugby players and in my case i struggle to gain weight like it's very hard for me to gain weight but i i gained a couple of of kilos and we had like a session of exercising per day with a with a coach that his name was Tato great great guy um it was it was intense because you were you went there with your with your with your stomach full of food and like you you went there and you started like doing all kind of exercises for two hours but it was also very good to like to generate a bond between us because we used to train in like the rugby team used to train together and then all of the people that were in the train in the train in the plane uh, used to train like together but it it created a bond between the all the rugby players and that was it <laughs> It was intense. I, it it does sound very intense, especially like two hours is a long time. I'm going into, you know, preparation in the film. Were you someone who worked out a lot or or was it something new to, you know, constantly be? Like before the film? Yeah. I used to do Taekwondo, boxing, but never, never like, um, like gym. Yeah, like, like the weights and never, just a different yeah, kind never of wait. physical activity for, for yeah, me yeah. to do. Yeah, I used to do like a lot of cardio and but never go to the gym and like lift weights, never. That was that was new for me. Is it something you've kept up after the film or not right now? <laughs> I I did it for about a month uh, after the film. But then I got like, I had like a fever oh, and no. I lost all my process and I left. I, <laughs> You're I, like, I I'm too up. tired right now. But if, yeah. at least you know you have it in you. So one day if you want it to pick it up again, you know you've done it before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have uh, techniques what was it like meeting the rest of the cast for the first time? Like, I imagine it was during the rehearsals in Barcelona. Like, did you immediately become close? And so when you're in the gym, like, kind of how do you create that bond? Are you talking during the, the whole time? Well, I met them actually in, in like, a, like a barbecue. We did uh, before started, uh, before the rehearsals in Montevideo where we also met or I also met for the, for the first time uh, the, the survivors and that was my first time with them in Montevideo and it was really nice it, like I didn't knew anyone but instantly uh, I saw that we could be a group a nice group and in the in the trainings, we we created a bond also because I don't know with Marcelo that was the captain of the team. Uh, he was also the captain in the training sessions. Like he was the one that told you to push harder and told you that okay now we go to this exercise. He was the one explaining things, uh, and that was uh, uh, an idea of the of Tato the coach that. But Diego Vejesi, that is the, the one, the actor playing Marcelo, uh, he was the one that detect, dictated the, the training. I think that's a really like interesting element to have because it just kind of adds to that whole experience and, and yeah. for you as your characters. Now, before filming, like what other source material did you refer to to increase your knowledge and awareness of this event? Of the event? Yeah, like of the plane crash. Like how much were you familiar yeah. with before? And then I know there's a lot 
out there but maybe you didn't like watch everything i know there's some documentaries the films yes. the specific one is based off a book yes i read of course the book the society of the snow and i when i was a little like 13 years old i went like on vacation and i bought a book because i wanted to be a doctor as i told you and I bought a book about the, that it's called I Had to Survive, that it's a book uh, written by Roberto Canessa and Pablo Viersi, because it was the story of an Uruguayan doctor that crashed in the Andes and survived and then become a cardiologist. So before everything, I, I, I read the book of uh, Roberto Canessa and then I also watched the, the documentaries and I watched a couple of interviews where there are a bunch of survivors and that's it. I didn't watch uh, Alive and I didn't watch like any other movies I didn't watch. I watched documentaries and read the books. I think that it's important for you and your process to kind of figure out, you know, what's important for you. And for, for this film, I know it was like actually hearing from the the survivors. And so it's good that you watch the documentaries. And what a sign that when you were like 13 years old, you bought this book. And then to be a part mm. of this whole journey, like years yeah. like later is, is just so surreal um so i know that connecting with the survivors and their families but also the victims families was an important part of this project what did it mean to have their trust and support during the whole process well it was the most important thing right like if you want to play a character that was a real human being you have you have to have the the support and the 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 help of his family, right? And they were very very nice to me, uh, very helpful, and it was it was quite a quite an experience. I know that you met and spoke with Coco's younger brother Alejandro. Um, like you mentioned, very emotional. What was he able to? give you or tell you that helped with your understanding of Coco, you know, who he was and how he lived. Yeah. He told me a lot about how, well, when, he, when Coco was 20, he was 15. So he told me a lot about how he managed his professional life, like how he was in, university and how he was with his girlfriend with his parents with his friends and it was then the the information that helped me to bring something together right so it was the most helpful helpful thing i got besides the the cards it was yeah he answered all my questions without hesitation. He he was very, very helpful. Yeah, and in the movie, you know, we can see how important his, his family is to him. His faith was another thing that was brought up. Um, just his optimistic spirit. And I know Alejandro left a nice comment on your Instagram about how your performance as Coco and this movie brought him back and it was a nice tribute. So that much must have also meant so much to you. Yes, yes. We did like the moment you met the family, you start doing it for them. Like from the start, it, from, from the day I met him, I knew that I had to do it for them and not for the or all the other things that come with doing a movie. So that was the, the most important thing to me, like their, like their acknowledgement and their, and their, and their, um, Almost like an approval. And, yeah. Approval. Uh, it was the, the thing that I was looking for, uh, right after the movie 
I mean, you're doing it for for these remarkable people who unfortunately, like some of them survived, some of them couldn't be here today. And and it's yeah. important that you had their, their support. Um, tell me about the letters that Coco wrote to his girlfriend and his family. Like, how did you use these as resources and information about him? Because there were quite a few different, like at least seven pages of, of letters yeah. that you kind of got to absorb <laughs> and, and go through. The the letter was was the the most uh, vital thing for me to have to knew how he was because it was a document that states states uh, everything he wanted everything he lived everything he wanted to live and everything he misses missed. So it was like a line of thought and it was perfect for, for an actor. And it was it was very remarkable for me how he managed to like talk about maybe uh, uh, eating uh, the deads or uh, how he wanted to have a, a, a house with his girlfriend and how he missed his father, his mother. It was very like intimate and very like a part of his soul, you know. So it was very, very emotional and very nice also to have that that sort of connection also. It's so rich as an actor to to have something so personal and private. Did did you maybe like shed some tears when reading the letters for the first time? Yeah, of course, of course. It was. It's. It's also. It's also harsh to 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 imagine imagine that situation, right? So it it was it was hard, but as an actor, it was uh, very rich, as you say. This is a rugby team. They're excited for their future before the crash. Of course, also like some friends and family that were also on the plane. But can you tell me about this aspect of team sports and brotherhood and how it kind of influenced how the group interacted with each other uh, before and after the plane crash? Yes, I think the the like rugby as a sport it has something very, very, like they they create a society also, I think when like rugby players and they have rules that the captain is like, you must always listen to the captain or even when they're playing, like you don't argue with the, with the referee and they have like a very, very important rules that they and they are they they behave like brothers with each other and we tried to emulate that and i think it went it went well but then there is like an argument of if rugby was the thing that saved them or if rugby was such an important deal i think that the first days like until the avalanche rugby was uh, was the thing that kept them together, but be- uh, after the avalanche, the rugby like disappeared, and they created something else and uh, more powerful. But I think it was important for us also to to generate that that rugby brotherhood. Uh, thank, thank you for sharing that. I love how you saw it because like you mentioned, it it could be, it's almost like a, a culture, like you said, a society that they created and you have this kind of will, they call it like a willpower to push and to survive. And they're, they're faced with so much on these mountains and I can only like imagine in real life the decisions that they had to make. Um, take me through yeah. filming the plane crash scene and the immediate aftermath, like how real it felt and what do you remember from filming that sequence well the crash was 
I don't know if it's ugly what I'm gonna say, but it was actually fun to film the crash because and I think I I have like my English is not that good like to explain so much technical details, but we were up like in a samba. You know what a samba is? I think it's like a um it was something that rotated, right? Yeah. I saw in the documentary, yeah, yeah it's something that yeah. moved. Yeah. I know that was that is the what they call the washing machine. That is something that rotates. Yeah. But we didn't do that. Okay. I, I, like, I, I didn't do that. No, the well, the plane crash was fun because we were like on a platform that was able to go up, uh, down, or like to the to the sides to the front and like really fast and really intense sometimes also while there were people that pointed to you like uh, air guns air guns to your face and snow and it was like fun but it was also intense because you had to put yourself in the situation that you were in a plane crash not in a in a samba, as I told you, but it was technically it was super crazy to watch how those those things are filmed, and and well, later you have like a a, a visual effects and VFX a team that did everything spectacular. That I think that's one of the reasons also why the plane crash looks so intense and so real you can really see how yeah. hopeless and scared everyone is but i know what you mean like this is your first film set so when you kind of get on a set and you see all the moving parts like it's fun yeah. to move around and play although it's very heavy subject matter um what emotions did you want to channel in your expressions as coco um, because he has this like optimistic spirit, but he does see a lot of dark moments, like when Nando's sister Susanna passes in front of him, or when the group discusses cannibalism to stay alive. Well, I think he indeed was very optimistic, but he was also one of the youngest in the plane. And what I what I read on the letters, he was also sensible you know like he wanted to go back he 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 missed his family and and the the sus the susie scene it's because in the letter he puts like today nando's bro uh, sister died uh, susie and so i wanted to give give a, a more like intimate and personal and sensible side of him also and he he's also very very optimistic he in uh, he was funny also in the mountain but i think those are the, the emotions i wanted to to capture and he was also very uh, responsible uh like I know he like he gives the money to Marcelo and then Marcelo asks him to go search for food for uh for drinks and he's the one that gives gives the food before the the avalanche so he was also a responsible guy it's nice to have these elements kind of throughout the movie because there's so many characters. So when you have kind of these little moments to explore yeah. who he was as a person, um, take me behind the scenes of the group scenes, especially the ones where you're close together in the plane. You're just trying to stay alive and, and keep each other warm. Like what was the mood on set between the actors? Was it like tense because you were staying in character or were there also like lighthearted moments in between filming these scenes well i think it, it depends on on the scene very much like the the scene uh, about where we talk about eating eating the dead and the director what wanted that that scene to be uh like to feel the nerve to feel like the tension in the air so we were 
we were very focused and it was like the last scene we had rehearsal we had uh, yeah rehearsal and we rehearsed rehearsal it like two weeks so we knew it was an important uh, scene and we were all very like uh, focused and the, but when we had moments before scenes that we were like normal like uh, also because it was very like filming three months every day with the same people with the same crew it was also like you you began to feel more comfortable so you but mostly we were if you were in, in set you were focused uh, on on the thing you had to do I know on TikTok, you know, you posted in between, like, I guess when you're not filming, you were practicing your dancing, you were playing soccer. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because we had a lot of, a lot of waiting. Uh, like, yeah, they call it downtime because I know that when, yeah. even if you weren't filming scenes, like they brought you all up to the mountain. Yeah, so yeah. you were there like the whole day, even if you had like we... one scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we went every day, even and you there were days you can go and you didn't even enter the set. So we, we started to found find ways to to kill some time. Like it was uh, we call it football tennis. Uh or yeah, dancing with with, with someone in of, of the of the team, uh, reading, listening to music, but we started to find ways to to make those waitings uh, more relaxed. And you have to get creative um, at some point. Yeah, yeah. The activities. Um, tell me about the avalanche scene. Like, how was that filmed with the snow and with you having to be pulled out from under by the others? Although, unfortunately, it was too late for Coco. I know there were um, like air cannons that blew the snow in yep. and, and blew the luggage. So can you talk a bit more about recreating that? Yes. Well, the, the scene where the canyons, uh, uh, like the avalanche was the scene where we, we because uh, it was a safe, but it was like you had to know new you had to know that you couldn't look like to the wall of 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 luggage and you had to so it was very technical it, it, and it was it was uh hard to shoot but it was also uh, a nice challenge and uh, yeah we there were like four canyons um pointing the luggage wall and the luggage was like from a material that was softer. So if if it hits your your head or your arm or it doesn't hurt. And the when they they tried to pull me out, that was a very, very harsh scene to shoot because because like it was all real snow, like in your face, like you're like in a in a table that it has like a hole in the center and it's all covered in snow and you put your head so it's like up to here and then this is uh, behind the table and they start to put you snow in the head and and it starts to to burn and you can't breathe and till someone starts to 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 try to to pull you out of there but they they hit you they like with the nails so it was very very hard but it was a really really good challenge so i was i was glad i i had, I had to do it myself because some some of the other actors are, had dummies that are like toys of themselves like realistic but it was harsh, but I'm glad I, I did it myself. It did look like very um, physical, physical challenge for you. Yeah, um, yeah. How many takes 
did it take to get the <laughs> not just one No, 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 no one. Like, I think there were like two days where we we did the 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 allude, like the the avalanche that specific part, and it was more than more than maybe more than ten. Very, Yeah. very intense. You were probably freezing after that, but I hope they took like good care of you after the fact. Yeah, yeah, Like no, if they they had took. the the warming fans and Yeah, yeah, things yeah. like that. No, they 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 took care of me after, but it was it was hard, but it was nice also. So we talk about these emotionally challenging scenes, like, you know, a lot of physical pain, these, these people deal with loss and questions of morality. How did you take care of yourself personally during filming, like on the wellness side, like after a, a challenging day, how did you unwind and relax? Well, um, we we had a a psychology that they put for us that I didn't uh, used his services, but if we wanted to talk to someone or something, he was there. And no, initially, I it's gonna sound strange, but it was like um, you finish and you go back. to your bed and to your bed to your room and I had a nice shower and I don't know I talked to someone like my father my my mother or my friends and then we, it was to go downstairs and be with 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 the cast again we played ping pong we played uh, we watched movies like the 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 cast was the thing that saved us, I think. I think that's so nice that you kind of created your own brotherhood and, and family with this cast and you had them because you said you think it sounds funny, but I think that as long as you have a good support system around you, like Yes. I guess for you, it was kind of easy to, to turn it off on and off because of that. Um, you mentioned the diet, you had to gain a bit of weight. Um, what kind of foods were you told to eat or what, is there anything you could not eat during filming? Like, well, we couldn't eat. When we started to lose weight, it was gradually, but they gave us the food and we supposedly should only eat the food they gave us. That it was like a soup, like one soup. And maybe like half, a baguette, like half a sandwich. And you couldn't eat besides that. But Was it challenging as for you? I told you, I had it, I had it. No, I had it easier. I had it easier because I, I gained like five, five, six kilos. And I lose weight. super quickly so I had to I had to like manage it better so I I could eat more but my my colleagues had a a rougher time I yeah guess it, it also it has to do with, I guess, your body personally and like how you intake food. yeah yeah Yeah. So you filmed at the Sierra Nevada mountains, uh, different crash sites they recreated of the Andes. How did that setting of the snow and the altitude add to the realism of the experience, especially with the harsh temperatures on set? Well, in Sierra Nevada, there are, uh, like, if you go with your coat, like, with your, with your, with your, like, equipment for mountain, you're not going to feel, like, cold, cold. But we were dressed like people that go to Chile, like, with a, with a shirt and a, Like we were dressed normally and what was harsh was that 
our feet began to like when your feet are in the snow for one hour they start to to like you start to lose uh feeling your your nerves like yeah like the feeling of that was very hard like in the hands also and when the sun started to to go it was the the hardest part because in the in the in the night the temperature goes down a lot and there were some times when when where you want you had to feel more cold so you like grab a piece of ice like snow and you put it like in your in your back or like inside your shirt to feel uh, real cold and um what was the other thing you asked me Oh, it was just like, how did it add to the, the cold? kind of, yeah, realism of the experience for you? No, no, it added. It was good because you, you didn't have to act the cold because you had it. So it, it was good. Yeah, you're basically no acting here, really, for, for any of you. You felt all the kind of physical the pain. and yeah. No. Uh, you said yeah, before... that that was real. <laughs> yeah, this is not acting for everyone. Um, you said that your director J. A. Bayona he knew how to bring the best out of the actors. So, what was he like as a leader behind the scenes, and how did he interact with you and the rest of the cast? He is the nicest guy ever. So, and he had like such a clear image of what he wanted in every scene that he made it simpler for you because he explained it so uh, simple, so so good that you understood what he wanted. And if he wanted more, or if he wanted something specific, he can be uh, also very demanding of what you like to go in to go in a state where you have to get, you have to give the best of yourself uh, in every moment. So it was, it was very good. And he's a good person. Like he's the nicest person ever. That is the most uh, amazing thing. And like it's someone you go, you go out, you go to eat, you talk to him, he explain you, he he's open. So it's it's very, very nice. I wanted to just give a special mention to the cinematographer or the director of photography, Pedro yep. Luque. Um, I know that he was around on set, but you only kind of get to see his work in full when you watch the movie for the first time. So what yes. was that like seeing his hard work as well on, on the visual side and how it added to the movie? Amazing. We knew Pedro was uh, amazing before watching the movie because he he also had a like a clear image of what he of what he wanted and he was very nice to everyone and they they work it like of course they work together uh, Vashona and him like they were together every time on set and they had the same uh, ideas and watched watch it on the on the big screen it was mind blowing what he what he've done he did and your co-stars Enzo and Matias are also receiving recognition for their work as Numa Tricotti and Roberto Canessa what can you say about their performances in the movie having been with them through this whole journey they are the they are, oh my gosh, what a question. They are really good colleagues and really good actors and really good uh, like people. So it's, it's, it's not uh, unusual that they are good, excellent actors. And I think all the, the recognition they are getting, it's, it's well given because you see they in, in like, they are perfect on on the screen and i think they they also made us better actors so and better better human beings that is most important so that's they are 
a, a role model. That's great. And um, another group kind of uh, being recognized is your hair and makeup team. They are Academy Award nominated yeah. as well. So um, tell me about working with them like behind the scenes and how their work really also helped accentuate and, and spotlight the film because it all looked very real in addition to, yeah. to the visuals. No, makeup and, and hair was crazy because they did such an amazing job and they worked perfectly and they were all nice people and i think they have they 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 they've earned that uh, nomination entirely and it helped a lot because you have like a super realistic uh, injury like in your face or in some part of the of the body and you you see it and you say okay this is what what they had you know like it's like you see it and it's what like okay it's real like it it looks so real and it helps to to understand what that injury or what that uh, burn could could felt like and and thinking about like where it came from as well right it kind of just helps piece the puzzle like the puzzle pieces together for you um when you're on set what did you personally take away from your time on this movie like it could be about the film industry but also like how this role challenged you like i know you kind of talked about it a bit before about the the cold and that physical pain but like just overall the experience like how did it make you sh a stronger person too well i think in every aspect of my life like it was the first time i was doing a, a movie and it was the the first time I was with a like with a group of of actors that 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 big and with a production team that it was huge and with all the areas being so so good at, at their work and but what initially makes uh, the difference and in the aspect that I initially learned a lot, it was they were all good people. They were all uh, nice to each other. And even to this day, we, like makeup team generated a bond and they are friends and like, or um, or like best, best, I don't know how to say it in English, a best story best to our team also they they've all become friends you know and that's the most uh the 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 thing that i get from from this movie to work with each other and to respect each other and uh, everything is going to be better if we work all together that's so beautiful because you want to be a part of projects that create that environment, mm. like no matter what the subject is, that everyone can be a family and, and be supportive and keep these friendships past when the yeah. film wraps. Um, the film won a Carmen Award in early February. I know you accepted the award on the film's behalf and you've also been to different galas and screenings with the team. How special is it to be at these events and celebrate the film's success? It's beautiful. It's beautiful to see the that type of, of recognition, right? Uh, of course, the the awards are not the like the, the, the main desire <laughs> you yeah. have. Yeah. Like I told you, for me the main reason was to was for the family. And but all this this recognition uh, of the people the 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 academies it's it's really nice because you feel like that it's something people is uh, like it gets to people people understand that it it's also it goes beyond the screen so it's really beautiful especially like the story i feel like it just 
opened it to a whole new audience who was not even aware of of this yes. plane crash and the survivors and you know a lot of them are you know writing books and, and telling their sides of the stories which is also very important um I think you should be so proud of yourself like your debut film so congratulations and I'm confident the first Thank of you. many films for you uh, will you be at the Academy Awards do you know I I, I don't think so like like some of the of the of the guys are planning like on going on or how how can it be but i i don't think i'll be there you'll be there in spirit like you'll be cheering yeah, 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 on the film course. from afar i know it's a very big cast as well so you kind of have to yeah. like figure that out we'll talk a bit more about your modeling career now because you walked that paris fashion week which was a big thing and you've also modeled and done ads for brands like ultra comb and suicidal trends so what do you enjoy about modeling and being in front of the camera well, I feel my modeling it's also a, like a part of all this this thing that has been created for of the for the movie. And I think it's it's nice, right? Like people usually think that it's like walking or looking but i think there there is a special uh, a special thing about uh modeling or you have to do it in a cer certain way and and i like it i don't know <laughs> i feel but like I, I is it like, like another that, that... form of acting for you really well you have to keep a uh, like a posture like they 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 ask you to 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 represent something also because they want like maybe they want it more uh, like with power with more uh, force or more more chill so you have to to maintain a, a an aspect so it's it's fun have you perfected the model walk yet I perfected it. I I'm still perfect. Like models have have like this this thing that is that the walk, like they call it the walk. It's very important. Like you have to have like your own walk, but it has to be a good walk. So I'm I'm perfectioning. Like I'm I'm still in the process of of finding my walk, but I'm I'm. I'm getting there. Yeah, it's a work in progress, but I'm sure yes. you'll have other um opportunities to to do carpets <laughs> and walks and things like that. Fashion shows. Are there any specific brands or designers that you'd love to work with in the future? Oh, I'm open to every brand. I think I really like from Argentina. There's a brand I really like. Uh, that it's Bowen, it's called. And then, of course, I'd like to do, I don't know, Armani, something like that. Just putting that out there. I, I think we can, yes. like, manifest it. That will happen one yes. day. <laughs> but if I had to manifest something, it's to do the live action of the course, right? I'm waiting for Tim Burton to call me. So, oh, the corpse bride. I know, right? I feel like that that would be a really interesting one to see yeah. as a live action. Yes. We'll see. Just we'll putting, see. Yeah, putting it all out there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have um. I'm sure your fans will start a campaign for you to, uh, like a petition for you to be cast in it. You definitely <laughs> have the good. height. Yes, but I have the same like a. Uh body too and my face is also really really similar i was gonna say it's kind of like a little pale right so you wouldn't have to do yeah. too much yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah you have a lot of passionate fans on on x yes. on tiktok on instagram 
Did their response to Coco and by extension to you as an actor surprise you? Yes. It was very surprising the the like response of the audience. Uh, so yes, it's it's surprising. I I never thought it would happen. Never. The tweets, the edits, the comments, like what does that support meant to you? It's nice. It's nice that they 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 take time to to do it. And I try to respond and to to watch everything they 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 do because I think it's it's a show of like it's it's a a way to to show their their love and their recognition and their their passion now for the film and for for the character. So it's 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 a really nice um. It's a really nice gesture. If asked, would you consider doing like an online or in-person convention in the future to meet your fans? Yes. <laughs> uh, I think I'll I'll like I'll do it with all the cast. I don't know if by myself. Like I I'd like to to for them to get to meet every everyone. So, yes, of course. I saw a video on um on Instagram. This was at a screening recently. Like you were just being surrounded yes. by people. I mean, how yes. unreal was that? There's so many people that there. Was, yes, that was very unreal. That was very crazy. And um, but it was also very fun, and yes, it was so crazy that 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 event because the thing was that I was supposed to get into the movie like like from a back door, but they sent me the 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 wrong address, so yeah, I, I enter like like. Through the front main door. entrance, <laughs> yeah. yeah, front door, like, and it was it was fun. It was fun. I mean, you were being grabbed at like from all angles. Security yes. could barely kind of keep you. Um, I think your height helped you though, being so tall. Yes. That you... I would have disappeared if I was uh, a bit smaller. Does it ever get overwhelming, like moments like that? Like I know you mentioned, it's a lot of fun. Um, I think I watched an interview with with um your co star with with um Enzo, and he did I think kind of mention that you know it's something so so new to him and like a lot of the cast. So do you ever feel like it's overwhelming? Yeah, like I don't think I have the repercussion. That I don't know, Enzo or Mati may have if they if they go down the street and they start walking. I get a few pictures, like I I get to a few people that that come and ask me and talk to me. So it doesn't get over overwhelming because it's not so so much. It, this this was like like a one time over like it happened that one time and one other time like in a train station. But it was a lot uh, calmer, so it doesn't until like until for now. It, for it, now, it's not <laughs> you're like foreshadow. Maybe one day it would happen. But I like that you're yeah. having fun with it and you're really embracing the the love that you get. Yeah. Um, have you gotten used to signing autographs? Do you also have a good autograph? Your signature? No, now? oh, it's super bad. <laughs> My my signature is super bad, so I'm sorry to all the people that have my signature. I saw you were signing some um outside at, at that kind of that screening, so I had to ask. Um, I saw. I know we can't go through the tweets because you're on your phone, but someone was. People were asking, "How tall are you?" They were curious, just because you tower over the rest yes. of the cast. Yes, that's a secret. I'm going to keep 
to myself. You're like, I am not... never going to say my height unless someone actually meets no. you and brings out like a yes. giant measuring tape. This will yes. be your secret alone. You and your family, yes. of course. Exactly. Um, do you have any other upcoming projects that you can share? Anything that you, you've been working on? Not for now. I'm I'm doing castings. So we'll see if something pops out so you are constantly doing auditions yes luckily that's exciting though i hope you get one of these these projects um are there any kind of aside from corpse bride are there any kind of genres that you would like to work with in the future or, or other actors i really liked the movie i don't know if you watch it beautiful boy I really like to do something like that. Um, I'd, I'd love to do a romance also, if I if I can choose. But uh, I'm, I'm open to every genre. Or like a romantic comedy? Both. Like I'm open to do everything. If I had to choose like a specific movie I'd like to do, Beautiful Boy, it's I'd really like to do that. Or I've watched Into the Wild yesterday. I don't know if you watch it. Yes, incredible but I, I really movie. Like, to... like Emil, yeah. it was Emil Hirsch um, in that movie. It was, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Another yeah. kind of like sur survival kind of movie, yeah. but um, based on, of course, but real I like, life. I like the, like the, the process the, the guy makes and all that like his philosophy I, i'd like to do something like that so. i have one more question for you it's our signature question if you could be any ice cream flavor which would you be and why okay it's an ice cream flavor i don't think I don't think this flavor it's anywhere in the world except Argentina. Or maybe yes, and I'm really like wrong, but it's crema del cielo, we called it. That the translation is a, a sky cream. So it's like it's like this color. And it's a flavor that the kids eat to eat it because it's like a. I don't know why, but the kids eat, eat this flavor a lot, but it's actually like a cream, like normal with, with, like, blue colorant, not blue. This color that I don't know the word, the name. So it's I'll just like a regular flavor but it's just colored to add something extra. Yes, and the name is like, like in Argentina, it's very, very uh, uh, common because the, the kids eat it too much. And I I, I, I think I would be that, that, that flavor because I, I think I'm connected with my, my kid, like myself. Oh, that's a cute answer. And I feel like it, if it's something that's nostalgic and brings you back to your childhood, you mm -hmm. you can't go wrong with, with a flavor like that. Thank you so yeah. much, um, Blast, for taking the time to chat. Uh, this was a lot of fun and getting to, to hear your thought process. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome. Really good questions. Of course. And I hope we get to catch up again in the future for your new projects. Um, crossing our fingers for that. But uh, until then, for all those watching, you can catch Blast in Society of the Snow. It is out now on Netflix. If you haven't seen it yet, I don't know what you're doing. Very important story. Um, incredible movie. And we will see you next time. Bye bye.